Hey guys, what's up? It's Gustavo here. In this video, I'm gonna let you in on the demon beast we got to know in Dragon Ball Z, but who's got enough power to even take down the gods of destruction in Dragon Ball Super? We're also gonna talk about the deadliest warrior that Frieza could ever recruit to his army, and who has a potential that could even surpass Broly. You guys might have met this character before. If you're keen to get what I'm saying, stay tuned to the channel and let's jump into the video. Okay. Frieza's army had this secret jail stashed away on some distant planet out in the universe. Now in that jail there was this dude who used to be the big bad for Frieza and Cody back in the day. A guy who really gave Frieza and his old man the creeps. This dude was none other than Cooler, Frieza's older bro. Cooler was held up in this top secret lockup for donkey's years, but eventually Frieza decided to spring his brother to suggest the idea of teaming up to wipe out the Saiyans and the Earth Spiders. But here's what a lot of people are scratching their heads over. Why did Frieza only just now decide to bust his brother out? I mean, why not do it way earlier, like when he was whooped by Goku on Namek, or even before he rocked up on Earth after being resurrected? Well, Cooler totally despised Frieza. They were major enemies back in the day, so before turning to an enemy for help, it only makes sense that Frieza would try other options first, right? After his defeat on Namek, Frieza hit up his old man for help to get back at Goku, but they didn't pull it off. When he came back to life, Frieza was pretty pumped thinking he could beat Goku if he just trained a bit. And he would have actually nailed it if Goku and Vegeta weren't getting trained by Whis, who's likely the top coach in the whole universe 7. So you can't really blame Frieza for not seeing that coming, can you? So after that, he tried to beef up his army and ended up finding Broly. He then thought it'd be cool to test Broly's power against Goku and Vegeta. But after everything that went down in the Broly movie, Frieza finally realized he needed an ally with the right potential to deal with with Saiyans and hate them just as much as he did. Cooler was definitely the top choice. So if you think about it, Frieza didn't believe he'd need Cooler because he always had a plan where he didn't have to team up with one of his worst enemies. But the thing is, all these plans just didn't work out. And maybe something that might have helped Frieza think of turning to an enemy is the experience he had in the Tournament of Power where he had to team up with his enemies to win. That probably opened up his mind in that aspect. I guess that answers your question, right? There are reasons why Frieza didn't turn to Cooler earlier. So in case any of you here don't quite get what I'm talking about, I'm referring to Dragon Ball Hakai, one of the biggest Dragon Ball stories out there. If you guys haven't heard of this story yet, you can read all the chapters on our website, which should be popping up on the screen right now. At the time I'm recording this video, there are already over 20 chapters available for you to read. If you're already familiar with Dragon Ball Hakai's story, you can help us keep creating the manga by supporting us on Patreon. With just a small contribution, you help us produce chapters much faster and also get some exclusive perks from the channel. To learn more, click the link in the video description. The next questions are about Janemba, another character from Dragon Ball Hakai. The first thing we're gonna ask about Janemba is if he's as powerful as he was in the Dragon Ball Z movie. The answer? Nope, definitely not. Janemba's got way more mojo in Dragon Ball Hakai than he ever did in the original Dragon Ball Z. In Dragon Ball Hakai, Janemba's not just a pile of bad mojo like he was back in Dragon Ball Z. He's a part of a godlike powerhouse that's greater than all the gods and angels. Janemba's just one piece of this deity that got split into five creatures. But even being just one of these five parts, he's super strong. The next question is about Janemba's power too. Could Janemba and the other prime beasts really take down the destruction god Beerus, destruction god Goku and Whis? Janemba and the other prime beasts might be able to beat the destruction gods like Goku and Beerus. Because it's mentioned by Picon that each prime beast could totally take down a destruction god. But if Janemba can beat Whis or another angel, I don't know. Zarate, who's the god Janemba came from, could possibly beat a regular angel like Whis or maybe even Daishinkan himself. But Janemba ain't Zarate, he's just a part of him. If I had to bet on a fight between Janemba and some destruction god, I'd put my money on Janemba almost all the time. But if I had to bet on a fight between him and an angel, I'd be at best 50% sure. But one thing I'm absolutely sure of is that your like will help our video a ton. Did you know that? It's true. The more likes a video gets, the more it's recommended on the platform. So you're helping us reach more people and helping other fans discover this amazing story that is Dragon Ball Hakai. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do it now. If you subscribe, you'll never run out of Dragon Ball content. And you'll always know everything there is to know about Dragon Ball Hakai. Now that you've hit that like button and subscribe, let's continue with the video. 
Let's gab about the Scions from Sadala, cause we've had a few questions about them too. The number one question we're getting is who would come out on top in a brawl between King Krista and Super Scion 3 Kaori? That's a bang up question, and it's real hard to give a definitive answer to it. We got a glimpse in his clash with Goku. That normal form King Krista had a power level that was above Super Saiyan 3 Goku and was below Ultra Instinct Goku with his limited energy, who was not as strong as the Goku that squared off with Jiren. So King Krista using his special transformation totally managed to outdo Goku's limited Ultra Instinct power. But we didn't get to see him putting that form to the test and using all he's got. Because when Goku lost control, Vado stepped in and broke up the fight and Krista didn't get a chance to show just how far he could go with that transformation. But I think it's safe to say that that transformation of his had to be at least as powerful as Goku in Ultra Instinct mode when he fought Jiren. And as for how powerful Kaori is, that's also a mystery cause we haven't seen her throw down yet. Even Kepler's power is a big question mark cause her level is totally different in the anime versus the manga. Like in the manga Kefla was as strong as Gohan but in the anime she was almost as strong as Goku in Ultra Instinct mode. So for this theory I'm gonna consider the most powerful version of Kefla which is from the anime, cool? Alright in the Dragon Ball Super anime, Kefla got close to Goku's Ultra Instinct Omen level using Super Saiyan 2. Kaioli can transform up to stage 3, so she's like a level above Kefla. We know that there's a big power gap between Super Saiyan 2 and 3, but the same thing goes for Ultra Instinct Omen and Ultra Instinct Mastered. And like I just said, Krista's got at least the power level of Goku in Ultra Instinct Mastered when he fought Jiren. Comparing Kaioli's and Krista's power levels gets a bit tricky since we don't really know if the power gap between Super Saiyan 2 and 3 is the same as the one between Ultra Instinct Omen and Mastered. And there's also other stuff we gotta think about. Like for instance if Kale or Khalifla have really kicked up their power between the Tournament of Power and the events of Dragon Ball Hakai, any power boost they've got will factor into the total power of their fusion. Another thing we need to bear in mind is that it's super tricky to know the full power of Krista since he didn't really show off his full strength in the fight against Goku. This was pretty obvious in chapter 6 but I reckon at some point in the story of Dragon Ball Hakai these two are gonna clash. Seeing as in chapter 6 Kale led on in a thought bubble that her main goal is to knock down the king. If this showdown does happen, I bet it'll be a really evenly matched and super exciting fight. This next question is about Frieza and Cooler. Why are Cooler and Frieza's transformations so wildly different? Well in Dragon Ball Z, Frieza had a heck of a time controlling his power. To get a handle on all that power, he used containment forms, which were basically transformations designed to dial back his energy. It's kind of like he was putting a lid on it. The first three forms of Frieza that we saw over on planet Namek weren't his true form, but containment forms he used. Frieza's real form is the one he uses now in Dragon Ball Super, since he's now able to handle his energy and doesn't need containment forms anymore. Cooler though, he's a different story. He had a solid grip on his power enough so that he could always stay in his true form. Besides maintaining his original form, he had an additional transformation that further increased his strength. That was that totally amazing transformation we saw him use against Goku in the movie. Frieza didn't have that form that Kula displayed in the movie cause he was naturally weaker than his bro, who was just on another level but after some training he also got a transformation that upped his power instead of decreasing it. And yeah that's the golden form, we don't really know if in Dragon Ball Z, Kula could also use Frieza's transformations. Maybe he didn't have control of his energy back in the day and needed these forms, but over time he got a better handle on it and didn't need him anymore. Or maybe Kula was such a genius that he was born all ready to go with full control of his power. Yes, we'll never know. In Dragon Ball Hakai, they kept Kula's original transformation, and this form seems like an evolution stage between the original and the golden form, but seems like this is something only Kula can pull off since Frieza never mentioned being able to to use this form. This transformation also seems to be something Cooler can mix and match with his other forms, sort of like his own extra special power, and he used it against Vegeta, combining the power of the golden form and this transformation. So, I think I've explained why Cooler and Frieza have such different transformations in Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Hakai, right? <laughs>
These are all the questions I wanted to tackle today, guys. I hope you're enjoying your questions getting answered. Personally, I love this interaction with you all. If you want your question answered as well, drop a comment with your question, your suggestions, and any criticism. I'll try to answer everything in the next video. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so we can hit 200,000 subscribers. Catch you next time. Peace out.